Hey, what's up everyone and welcome to the School of Personal Finance. So a few weeks ago, I made a video called How to Create Your Own Financial Plan. And after that video, I received a bunch of emails and comments asking me things like, what kind of software do you use when you create financial plans? How often should you be going in and looking at everything and updating the data? What kind of scenarios do you run? Like what if scenarios and how often are you actually in there changing things? So I thought it would be helpful if I actually went behind the scenes and showed you the software that I use, how we keep everything up to date, all the scenarios that we're looking at, and basically how it all works. So I hope you get something out of this video today. Let's get to it. So I was a financial advisor for almost 20 years before I decided to go independent and start my own firm called School of Personal Finance. But when I was starting it, I had a different vision for the company. Really what I was gonna do was just have the YouTube channel and create online courses for people. So have like a beginner course for people maybe just out of college or just getting married, having kids, maybe have a course for people who were like in their 40s around my age, and then having a course for people that were going into retirement. But as I've continued making these videos, which has been for about a year now, I get so many emails and so many specific questions that I've kind of realized that people do need the personal touch. Like, I always joke around and I say, personal finance, it's very personal. It's very specific to your situation. So it's hard to really learn through a course or through videos if you don't have somebody giving you specific advice. So I've been throwing around the idea of doing like a 30-day financial planning boot camp for people where I could work one-on-one -on -one with them and actually create a financial plan using the software that I'm about to walk you through. I would love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments or you could email me rich at schoolofpersonalfinance.com and let me know if you think that uh, that, that would be beneficial. Obviously, I think the, the uh, YouTube videos are you know very helpful as well, but having somebody actually look at your specific situation, I don't think that there's a replacement for that. So, all right, let's start. I'm gonna share my screen with you and walk you through an actual scenario, financial planning scenario for a married couple that have two children. Let's go to the screen. All right, so the name of the financial planning software that I use is Right Capital, and it's like my playground. It's so powerful. There's so many capabilities in here. It's really great. So now I'm going to try to run through everything very quickly because I don't want this video to be an hour long. So right on this first page, if you remember, the first part of the financial plan is gathering data. I need to understand the client's situation. So here, this is where we input everything, and I'm able to either link people's banks, bank accounts and investment accounts, or I could add it manually. So if somebody has, for example, a Chase you know, credit card, checking account, savings account, I could link to their online banking right through here and it pulls in all of their data. So like their bank account, this stuff would all be pre-filled coming from the feed from Chase. But in this situation, I'm doing everything manual. So they have a checking account and a savings account. They have credit cards. They have investments, 401k, 403b, and all this stuff would pull in also. So if their 401k is with Fidelity, we could link to it and it will pull in all the holdings, the values, and they're updated every single night. So it's awesome from there. All the information is updated you know daily and I could go in there and look at everything on a real-time basis if we up if we input things manually then we actually have to go in and change it as the values change uh, their loans they have a mortgage and a student loan and they own a home that's currently five hundred thousand dollars they bought this home ten years ago so you want to make sure that you have all the right information in here um, annual property taxes and insurance it's important to put that in here because it's going to calculate that with the cost of home ownership throughout the year. And then for insurance, we have their term life, group life. So this is where we input all the data. And again, you could link it to your existing online banking accounts and it just makes it so much better. All right, so next, after we have all the data in there, then we're gonna have goals. So for goals, we have retirement, Sue at 62, Ben at 65. For monthly expenses, now this is how much they wanna spend each month in retirement, not including their housing costs because we've already accounted for that. So $5,000 a month. And now for this, you could just have one line item or if you want, you could go in and we could do a detailed worksheet of how much you're gonna spend each month in retirement. So for simplicity purposes, we're just doing a $5,000 monthly expense in retirement. And that's what the system is going to use. So now for annual health care, I'm just using a nationwide estimate. Same thing for long-term care costs. And then some of their goals. They have their son's college and their daughter's college that they want to pay for. And we actually have them paying for two-thirds college. And for the other third, they're going to be taking out loans. The kids are going to be taking out loans. And then we have a vacation goal. They like to go on nice vacations. So $8,000 a year for vacations. And then also we have their daughter's wedding that they want to be able to pay for. 
for. So 25 grand, that's in today's dollars, but see we have it for 2037. So the system will automatically inflate that number for 2037, whatever $25,000 costs then, that's the number that the system is gonna use. And up here, you can see all the different categories and everything that are in the system. And for this example, I'm using Sue and Ben. So for Sue and Ben, you know, they're married, they're 40 years old, and they have two kids. All right, so that's for the goals. So now if we go to income, we input their salaries, they have social security that they're gonna get. I use, uh, you know, where the system will estimate it. We could put in what year they wanna begin. So for Sue, we're saying age 62. And for Ben, we're saying year 70. But the system, we could ask it to give us an optimal strategy when is going to be the best time, um, or we could, you know, dictate when they want to take it. And then Sue's also going to get a pension. She's a teacher. So we have $50,000 that starts at Sue's retirement, and it's not increased for inflation. So it's going to be $50,000 when she retires forever. There's no cost of living increase on the pension. Then if we quickly go to savings, they're both doing 5% in their 401ks, and they're doing $2,000 to their son's 529, 3,000 to their daughter. Now for expenses, this is how much it costs them each month to live. So now if you have the budgeting tool, if you link your bank accounts where it will automatically go in and show you how much you're spending each month, then we could fill this, uh, we could fill this out automatically, or we could just put the $5,000 in here, or we could go and do a detailed worksheet. So for this example, we're going to say that they spend $5,000 a month right now to live, not including their housing expenses because we already accounted for that. So now if we go to the dashboard, it's going to start calculating. It's going to show us their net worth. So assets, liabilities, net worth. So they have $546,000 net worth, and then it shows us the details for it. So it gives us the breakdown of all the assets and liabilities. And then we could go over here and we could see it broken down by individual and then by joint, and it gives us their balance sheet. And then we could look at historical also, where it will show us a chart of how they're doing over time, which is very cool. So now if we go to liquidity, this is just telling us, do they have enough liquid cash in the bank? So we could dictate this. We could say we want five months of living expenses. They tell us how much that is, and we're short. So they tell us what the deficit is. So pretty cool with that. The budget's not going to show anything. This only comes up once you link your bank accounts, and it could start pulling in all the transactions. Now the debt, the capabilities on this are awesome. This is one of my favorite parts on here. So what you could do is it shows the different debts that you have and we could use like the debt snowball or the debt avalanche and use strategies to pay off this debt. So in this scenario, we're gonna say that we wanna use the debt snowball, which is the lowest to highest balance that we wanna pay this off. Now for these four debts that we wanna pay off, their current payment is $2,298. And we're gonna say that we could add $300 to that to try to pay it down the debt faster. And by doing that, by using the debt snowball, we'll have a total savings of over 45,000 and be done with it 73 months sooner. And it's also cool, you could edit this and you could take out the mortgage. If we just say, you know what, we wanna focus on paying these other three debts off as soon as possible, and we're willing to throw an extra $300 a month at it, it shows you how much you'll save in interest and how much quicker you'll be done with it by using the debt snowball and adding the $300 to it. And then it will also show you where the next payment is gonna go each month. So it shows you here, the current payment, we're gonna go at Ben's credit card, because that's the lowest balance. So $100 is the current payment, but we're gonna throw that extra 300 at it. So for the next month, these are the payments that we're making over here. And then you can even look at the details, which is very cool. We'll change this to monthly. Let's start with Ben's credit card. And it shows when we're gonna be done with it. All right, we're paying $400 a month to it now, and we'll be done with it in January of 2022. Student loan, I'm not gonna go over. That is very good if you're working towards student loan forgiveness, um, but we're not doing that in this case. And then tasks, we'll just look at real quick. We could add a task. So when I'm working with somebody, I could add a task in here and assign it to them with a due date. They could go in and tell me they completed it, or they could assign a task for me. All right, so now investments. Now this gives you a breakdown of your current allocation. So for their all their accounts, they're 90% stock, 10% bond, and it gives you the breakdown for their current asset allocation. And now in this case, if we say that we wanna be growth, which is 70-30, it's gonna tell us how to get there. It'll tell us what we need to do in order to take this aggressive portfolio and bring it to a growth portfolio. So we'd have to sell these equities, we'd have to increase the bond exposure, and this is also great for rebalancing. So I love this section as well, it's very cool. It'll also give you a detail, you know, if we want to get this growth down to the target, we got to sell 3.9% of the growth, right? We have to increase our corporate bond holdings here because we're well below what the target allocation is. And then we could go to sector and style. 
And this shows our portfolio compared to a market index. So technology, we're a little bit overweight technology. The big ones, like communications, we're overweight communications. And it tells us here, we're overweight communications and we're underweight energy. See, for energy, we only have 3.55 and the market index is at 7.36. So that's just good information to know. And then you could look at styles also. So we're very similar to the market index, which is right here, right? Basically a large cap blend portfolio. And then concentration, it will tell you if you have any holdings that are more than 5% of your entire portfolio. So you want to make sure you're diversified and that you're not loading up on one security. So this will give you a little red flag on that. And then tax allocation, this is very cool as well. All their money is basically in 401k and 403b, which they're going to have to pay taxes on when they retire. They don't have any investments in Roth or in brokerage accounts that uh, are not going to be taxed in retirement. And then the tax-free bucket over here, that is going to be their 529 plan. So when they take those out, they won't owe any taxes on it. But it's just good to be able to see because now we could start thinking, you know, that we need to uh, maybe strategize a little bit around that. And then as far as holdings go, this shows us a breakdown of all the holdings that they have in their portfolios. All right. So now if we go to retirement, this is really the brains of the whole system. So this will show, based on everything that we've input so far, what are their probabilities of success? And it runs a Monte Carlo simulation, it's called. So in this scenario, they're in very good shape. This is the current plan. So they have a 79% probability of success. Now proposed plan, so what we could do down here is we could go down and we could play with things. So the proposed plan, I say that Sue works another year to age 63. And I can see right here that that brings us up to 85%. Like let's say for example, if we had her working till 64, that brings us up to 88%. And we could play around with all these things. So you know what, I'm actually gonna bring this down to 62. I'm gonna say that their pre-retirement living expenses that they spend $7,000 a month instead of $5,000 a month. And again, this does not include their housing because their housing is already included in there. So this is on everything else. And now they were at 88% before this. When we refresh right here, that brings us all the way down to 17%. So it shows you what a huge difference it makes by spending an extra $2,000 a month during these years before retirement. But we could toggle all of these things. So like Social Security, we could say, you know, we're going to do the optimal strategy for Social Security. And as far as current allocation, we're going to go to the most aggressive allocation and click refresh. And that brings us up to 24%. So again, the big driver here, if we drop this down to 6,000 and click refresh, we jump back up to 71%. So it's amazing how big of a difference that makes. And now, I mean, I could play around with this seriously all day long. And then if we click on income, it'll show 67% of their income is stable. So that's a very important number. So we have Sue retiring at age 62. So at age 62, their stable income, it's that $50,000 pension, right? So pension and then social security, once they start kicking that in, those are very stable. So 67% of their income is coming from stable sources. And these orange bars, these are the withdrawals from the 401k plan and the 403b plan in retirement. And then if we go to stress tests, we could play around with different things. We could say, what if the market drops by 20% if we have a market crash? Or what happens if the tax rates really go up? So all of these, we could say, you know, a 20% equity markets crash by 20%. They would still have an 88% chance of success. Taxes go up by 20%. They still have a high probability of success. So inflation looks like the biggest risk to them. If inflation really goes up, that could hurt them. And then Social Security, we could look at the different strategies. So their current strategy is Sue taking Social Security at age 62 and Ben taking it at age 70. So we could see that they would actually get $560,000 more if they both did it at age 70. If they both filed at age 70, that is the optimal strategy for them. Now, this is making the assumption that they're both going to live to age 90. And as we know, that is no guarantee. Um, but that's uh, that's what the assumption is that we have in the system. And then Medicare, they, you know, they show you the different options with Medicare Part A, B, and D, um, you know, with the coverage and everything, just to help you when the time comes to make the right decision with that. So now cash flows, this is the one that I spend the most time in because you could get into the nitty gritty of everything. So we could look year in and year out, their income inflows, so they mo both make 70 grand. So that's why we have 140 then. We could look at the expenses, their goals, the amount that they have to pay in tax, the plan savings, which are their 401k plans and the 529 plans total outflows. And we could do this year by year and look at where the money's coming from and where it is going.
everything. So like if I want to drill into any of these things, like expenses, it shows me. Living expense, that's the $5,000 a month. The housing expense, if I want to see what that is, it'll show me principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. That's how we get the housing expense. The debt, right? This is the debt snowball that we're currently doing and their life insurance premium for their total expenses. And we could go year by year for this. It is amazing all of the information that is in here and how helpful all of this is. So we could see these plan distributions. This is money coming out of the 529 plans when the kids are gonna be going to college. We could see the goals. We have a very big jump in goal right here in 2037. So if we look to see what that is, that is the wedding. $38,000 for the wedding that we'll be taking money out to do. And we could see that we're short that year. So we have to take $15,000 out of our taxable account in order to make that happen. So this right here, it is awesome. Tax payment, we could look at federal, state, FICA tax, the total tax payment for each year. And we could do the same thing with net worth, with your investment assets, with the accounts. We could go into the accounts and look at the ending balance account. So with these 401k and 403bs invested aggressively, I mean, they're growing at a very rapid pace. So we could see by the time they're 60, they should have over $2 million in those accounts. And obviously we could look at this year to year and see, you know, are we on pace? Is That's what's actually happening. Are we doing well compared to this plan that we've put together? So a ton of information in there. So I'm gonna quickly move on here. It'll give us an analysis for life insurance. Do they have enough life insurance? Do they need more? Same thing with disability insurance, long-term care. We could analyze property and casualty insurance in here. For the college funding, it'll tell us, are we gonna hit our goal or do we have a shortfall? I think for the daughter, I set it up so there's a little bit of a shortfall there towards the end. And we could do a strategy. We could see, well, how much do we have to add in order to not have a shortfall? What could we do to get it to where, you know, we're paying 100% of, of what we what our goal is for college? And then for the tax portion, I love the tax portion of this software also. There's just, it's unbelievable what this thing could do. So it shows you the different rates for, you know, the current situation, how much, uh, what tax rates they'll have every year. You could look at the details of that as well. And when we look at this, look at, I could go out in any year and look at what a 1040 would look like, what their tax return would look like. So we have their income, we have the standard deduction, and we could see what the tax liability is. If we go out to, let's even say, you know, year 2060, which is 40 years from now, we could see they have big social security benefits. They're both collecting social security at this point. Um, they have withdrawals taken from their uh, retirement accounts, right? They have their RMDs right here. So these are some big numbers on here and it shows what their tax liability would be. And now if we look at distributions and conversions, this gives us so much great information. We could play around and see, does it make sense to do Roth conversions? So I could have a strategy here where I wanna fill up the 22 to 25% tax bracket with conversions. That's what this blue line is that you see in there. So let me show you real quick. If I say zero, as far as doing conversions, then this is gonna to change to where it's not filling up these lines of the tax bracket, where watch the lines once I say, you know what, I wanna fill up, I wanna do Roth conversions until I hit the top of that 22% or 25% tax bracket. Now I'm gonna do conversions in those years to take money from my traditional, my 401k or my IRAs and convert them to Roth, pay the taxes then, at these lower tax brackets, so I'll have tax-free income in retirement. And by implementing the strategy, you end up with $1.1 million more than you would if you did not convert. So that is awesome as well. And you could look at comparisons. So by converting, you're gonna have 100% tax-free, where when the other, if you just keep going the way that you're going, you have very little tax-free, just the 529 plans. And then you could actually look at the breakdown of the details of it as well. So the tax portion of this is great. And then for the estate planning part, it shows you know where you could check off. Do you have a will, power of attorney? You have you updated your beneficiaries, living will, trust, all that fun stuff. And it will also do an analysis to see, are you going to owe estate taxes when you pass away? And then the last part I wanna show you here is that you could go in and you could print all of these reports. So if you wanna print out a report of your balance sheet or your uh, budget or the debt that you owe or your investments or the whole thing put together with the different scenarios, then you could go in and you could create an actual report. I like to have just a saved PDF from year to year that we could then go, and I'll show you real quick, that we could put in the vault. So the vault is a place that we could upload data upload files to the vault. So like monthly statements for brokerage accounts or these PDFs of the financial plans, we could upload them in here and it's a shared folder for the two of us. So even like important documents,
documents like copies of a driver's license or a passport that you want, might want to keep in a secure folder, you're able to upload it into the vault. And there's a shared folder. And then also, you know, clients can have a private folder where it's just for them, where I can't see what is in there. So that's it for the software. Back to the video. All right, everyone, that is it for this one. I know we covered a lot in this video. I wanted to try to get through as much of it as quickly as possible to show you all the capabilities and what a financial plan actually is and what it could do for you. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, hit that like button. Helps so much with the YouTube algorithm as far as I'm showing my videos to more and more people. I will see you all again next week. Thanks a lot.